Hello. Welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend, I think, will be visiting soon. I have to figure out what I'm doing for Halloween and Thanksgiving. Got all about that. And thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And wow, I got a whole bunch of subscribers. Thank you very much. Bum Slicks. Yes. I gave him his plenty of shouts. Again, another shout again. Go check over. Or Slick Bomb, I'm sorry. Another two. It's been, a, it's been a long, weird day. I haven't been working for like seven days straight. So I'm kind of getting out of it. Again, sleep deprivation. I've been hoboing at night. It's not good. Always get your proper night's sleep. I'm going to get that tonight. And tomorrow morning. And probably tomorrow and noon. <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank everyone who's liked, comment, and subscribed. And I will be checking my email soon to see if I have any emails. Um, yeah, as always, whenever you leave a comment or subscribe and I can see what your name is, you get a special shout out and a little video. So let's see here. So I'll start kind of the business end. Let's see here. Alex Stacy, thank you very much, sir. You are going to get the six count. Also, Donovan Christopher, thank you very much, kind sir, for that. What's another good one I have? You're going to get the Mundo Madness.
Derek Jones, again, thank you very much. Let's see here. Get more gifts. You are going to get the Kung Fu special. Because I don't know what else to call it. Jack Carlson, also, thank you very much. Again, a very recent subscriber and commentator. For that, I'll get the I'm your tag team partner. And Dean Jones. I don't think. Which I have to make more gifts. Shoot. You are going to get, unfortunately, one of my favorite wrestlers gifts. Yano. And bum slicks because you've mentioned me so much. And that was actually a pretty good podcast. Again, go check out bum slicks YouTube page. You're because it's almost that. Well, it's almost that time of year again, folks. You're going to get El Dia de Macho. And Dean Jones, again, thank you very much. Alex, thank you. Donovan, thank you. Derek, thank you. Jack, thank you. And Mum Slicks, thank you. Again, I'm sorry, Mum Slicks, I've kind of run out of gifts. I have to make more gifts, and I don't think I'm going to another event until probably November. -ish. I have to go to my library. Tomorrow's my day off, so maybe I'll start making a couple more gifts. Add some videos. Maybe a speech or two. I think I still have the Ty Dillinger speech. I don't know. I'll have to do that. Also. Then my notes here. Find Ty NXT speech. Oh, maybe I can do a bro. Bro, 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 bro. Sunglasses and sit downs. And I'm making all my little notes. When I should be talking about Monday Night Raw. This was was a was a little fun show. Um, kind of weird. 
One thing WWE is doing a lot is that they're having rematches over and over and over, over, over. And... Oh, let's wake up and over and over again. Um, however, I'd just like to add one side note. I did watch the Bound for Glory, and Bound for Glory again, I, I think it was good. Um, it seemed like a really fun, good, glorified TV show. And, and kind of looking at the things back, and, and I think it was just long, and it was, it was good, don't get me wrong. And this will probably be the last time I touch on this, but I, I can see why the WWE released Austin Aries, because he just, like, no sold Starship Pain. Johnny Mundo is quickly becoming one of my favorite wrestlers. Yeah, and I even have a gif of him doing Mundo Madness. And Johnny Mundo pin hits Starship Pain, I think a second time. And pin him, Johnny Mundo go up to celebrate. Instead of being the the the, the good wrestler. Austin Aries like looked like he went into business for himself. Just like literally jumped up, like right after. Nor normally a heel, they're always like, "Oh, it hurt." They just kind of roll out of the ring and just kind of like, like very quietly go up the ramp or or back somewhere. And he just like kind of like stormed out. It's like really Austin Aries, be a pro. I, I I never did like Austin Aries. People were hot on him. He's he's a good wrestler. He just just seems like a jack ape, which is different from the other word. My girlfriend can't say that I'm cursing on YouTube. Um, with that being said, um, I think there's still going to be a crown jewel going on. I think there's going to be too much money involved. I don't like really involving politics and stuff into wrestling. Wrestling's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a cel really a celebration of the performers. It's supposed to be entertaining, or as I like to call it, it's, it's really the theater of the absurd. So I try not to get too heavy and deep into it, but WWE might not be going back to Saudi Arabia after this one. And and we'll see how that goes. Again, I just want to mention it. It is in the news. It's on every other wrestling show. Might as well be on the Hobo Show. Of course, I have my Macho Man shirt on. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I think he's, I don't know if he's the greatest of all time. I'll tell you what, he's on my Mount Rush for best, for a lot of reasons. And I think YouTube's offering us, YouTube people, to do surveys and stuff and polls. So eventually, maybe Friday I'll fiddle with that a little bit. We'll see. Again, I still have a couple more days of work left. So, let's get to Raw. I do apologize for that sidetrack. But we have, again, Raw opens up. Again, very typical Raw fashion with a promo. And a little bit of a recap. You have Bronze off and Drew come out. Promo and recap. A little, again, tease of dissension there. The sheet, well, actually, just Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns comes out with no Dean Ambrose. Um, Rollins gets the cheap pop of the night. Oh, I should do that video. I should make that gift. Kitten, hello. Do that probably again tomorrow. Um, he gets the cheap pop. Philly is a great town. They're best known for the cheesesteaks. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Gino's cheesesteaks, I think the only thing is that they are overpriced. Again, Philadelphia and New York are very common. If you ever go there, you people say Gino's cheese sticks are the best and it's a place to go. To me, it's a little bit overrated. The other thing about Philadelphia is that you can really go to any pizzeria and they have them kind of in, on every corner. Yeah, what's wrong? Come over here. Say hi to people. Hello. Hello. There you go. You got your yards. Um, but again, uh, Philly cheesesteaks, you can get them really at any 
pizzeria. And that's a fun thing about Philadelphia is that there's a good pizzeria really on every street corner. So you don't necessarily have to go to Gino's. You can just go to the corner place. You know, New Jersey probably the two low two out of the th three, four little restaurants in Lawrenceville have really good cheesesteaks. Again, the closer you get to Philadelphia, for some reason, the price goes up. It's the same thing. But hey, that's my little spiel about that. So again, Rollins gets the cheap pop top, pop top, my chili cheese sticks. Maybe for my, what is it? For my next milestone, whatever that is, I'll make a cheese stick. Show you how a real cheese stick should be made. But back to wrestling. So this starts off with Seth Rollins and Drew, Drew McIntyre's the first match. This was darn good. I mean, as singles competitors, they, they can both hold their own. Rollins, obviously, the much more quicker, I think just a little bit more agile. Drew's pretty darn agile. Again, Drew's more powerful of the two. Um, that definitely shows off the match where Drew uses a lot of his core strength to get out of certain certain predicaments. Um, the, the, my my only real thing about this is that they're supposed to have the like the best in the world Royal Rumble, and you don't have Drew get in somehow. I mean, he's right now besides the Conquistador. He's the only true international star that's actually in this qualifying match. It's not it's just an All-American Cup in Saudi Arabia. Um, again, it was a fun match. I mean, both men can really put on a really entertaining match. Um, Dolph eventually comes down. He pulls down the rope. So Rollins cannot hit the, 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 the stomp or black stomp or blackout or whatever it's called, the curb stomp. And then, of course, Dean comes out to stop that, to stop his interference. And then it's a count-off victory for Seth. Drew McIntyre got counted out. Kind of a bummer. But again, for the most part, the whole match, really besides the ending, was really good. And I think if it wasn't for the ending, I'd give it a surf and turf rating. But this match... And it has more to do with all of the interference and really the way it ended in a countout. This is your classic cheeseburger match. And this led really, there were, for some reason, there were a bunch of promos. Then we see Bailey giving hugs out to Trish, Stratus, and Lita as you see them backstage. Um, Dean teases a breakup. Seth says, why'd you get involved? Dean's like, oh, I'm there to, I'm, I'm, had to, had to give you a hand. It's like, I didn't need your help. And then, then Roman's been watching some Steven Larson because he's becoming chill, Roman. Got between the two. Chill. Then you have Triple H and HBK, the Crown Jewel, Crown Jewel DX promo. The same thing with Kane and Undertaker. You will rest in peace. I don't even know if I can do the eye roll thing right. It was okay. It's a promo. Um, again, that's not one of the matches I'm looking forward to. I'm afraid that's going to be another like hour-long nap. It is, it is what it's going to be. Then we get finally back to some wrestling. Then you have Ember Moon and Nia Jax versus a returning Tamina who switched to Raw because she was on SmackDown for a while and Dana Brooke. It was a fun match. I think the reason why I made it fun is that you had both a fast, agile person on both sides with Ember Moon and... Dana Brooke, then you had the two powerhouses in Nia Jax and Tamina. 
And with that, a Samoa drop versus Samoa drop. Samoan headbutt versus Samoan headbutt. Hey, that's that, that sounds like fun to me. Again, so for a while you had Ember Moon versus Dana Brooke. And then Nia Jax got in, and then Tamina eventually got in, I think. I forget the exact order. But eventually, Nia Jax and Tamina, was a, that was really the highlight of the match. Because he had a, a, a standoff between the two strong women, I guess, of the WWE. And Nia Jax could not get the Samoa drop. Tamina, however, did. I think Nia Jax got in the better headbutt, though. So, again, that's... It's such a fun minor storyline where you have a Samoan versus Samoan. And, of course, the Wild Samoans are known for their headbutts. So that's always... And never get headbutted by a Samoan. I think the other thing is you never want to get headbutted by a Scottish person, too. That's also... Ooh. Um, eventually, Ember Moon did hit the Eclipse. I think on Dana Brooke eventually got back in. And then Oh yeah, that's because Nia Jax has tossed Dana into her corner. Ember Moon hit the eclipse on Dana Brooke. Ember Moon and Nia and Nia Jax over in a really fun cheeseburger match. And then because there is going to be a Battle Royal at Evolution. Oh, wait a second. Uh, Nia Jax got tossed out first. Then I guess Tamina got tossed out second. Ember Moon got tossed out third. Dana Brooks stands tall, so this is her Battle Royal moment. Everyone has to have their moment in the sun. Dana Brooke, soak up that sun. Then, oh, I don't like the Bellas. I never like the Bellas. You had a Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins promo. There were some good lines. There were some good lines. I see. Ah, I want to say Naya. Ronda Rousey seems best when she's allowed to say natural things. Things that sound just... Someone probably did write it for her, but it just sounds naturally mean and nasty. Probably the best line is like, the only door you opened was to John Cena's bedroom. And we all know how that ended. John Cena kicked you out of that same door. That was a funny line. The crowd really said, Whoa! She said that. That was that was the best line of the night. The worst line, besides whatever that the Bellas talk about, was something about how the Bells are like smallpox or something. Not good. I mean, the only reason I think people watch the Bells is to see a slip. You know what I mean, folks. Again, it kind of might be my thing. I never liked the Bellas, though. Oh, um, the Bellas did bring out security. The one security guy pulled that backdrop like a champ, though. He gets a thumbs up for that. Good, good. Oh! That, that, was, that, was, that was a good... Entertaining cell. Um, Kurt Angle came out to a promo uh, with Bobby Roode and Chad Gable there. And Kurt Angle was wearing like a Hawaiian shirt, straw hat, shorts. Looks like he just came back from vacation in Florida, Hawaii. And that outfit was glorious! <laughs> no way. We had no way Jose sighting. I guess no way Jose just shows up to arenas and does the conga line in the backstage and picks up 
Congo people. Not, I guess they're not rosebuds, but they're just party people. The fiesta people. That's the one. And then Baron Corbin says, oh, oh, you haven't had a match in 12 years. We're going to have a tune-up match versus the Authors of Pain. Next we have Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. And this was really the better of the two matches. And again, because there was a bit less outside interference, or at least the outside interference actually seemed to make a real difference in the match. I mean, both hit moves that I don't think I've ever seen him do before, or at least I haven't seen him do in forever. Um, Dolph had a top rope knee face buster thing. That looked good. Dean did like a reverse backpack body buster. Like you pick the guy up. It's hard to explain, but so here's you. You pick the guy up, bend his legs back, bend them forward, and kind of flop. So that was new. I don't think I've ever seen Dean do that before. So that was pretty good. Um, eventually, Drew and Seth do get involved. I mean, but for the most part, it actually added to the story. It didn't take away from it. Um, again, you, you have you have a shoving match at the end. Well, well, Dean eventually lost. He got hit with a super kick because he was dis being distracted by Seth and Drew outside. Dolph hit a super kick on him. Dolph won in a really good surf and turf match. And it was fun because there was a little good shoving match between Dean, Seth, and then Roman. Again, has to break it up. Kill Roman. Right now, because my little video couldn't only take so much, we're going to have a chill Yano moment. There we go. I hope everyone had a chance to tranquilo or chill. Whatever. I had a little, got myself a little Pepsi to wake up, get to the gym soon. Because again, I do have SmackDown and the Mixed Max Challenge to review, which I do want to get done definitely for tomorrow. I had to do Raw. A little bit late tonight. Well, because I couldn't get yesterday. I had to actually get to sleep. So I had to wake up about today. I forgot to shave, too. Then we get a Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal match. For some reason, this was really fun. And also, both Singh brothers are back. Yes! I like the Singh brothers. They're fun. They're there to get beat up, tossed around. I mean, Bailey was with with Finn. I get. I don't know if she's his valet now. WWE going back to the days of valets. Cool. I think the last valet I saw. Jeez. I really have to think about this. Well, at least in WWE. I know there's a beautiful Brenda in Lucha Underground. Brandy Rhodes, for the most part, is Cody's valet. I think I'm going to go back. Really? With Gold Dust? And. Oh, what's her face? Been that long, but but his what? Uh, Terry Reynolds. That's a Terry and Goldust. Wow, that is a long time. 
Terry Reynolds never really wrestled. I mean, a AJ Lee would wrestle, accompany people to the ring. Sable wrestled. Terry Reynolds might have had like a Braun panties match. Probably one uh, was the original Braun. <laughs> I think that might have been the original Braun panties match or the original evening gown dress match. See, it's been a while. Unless I'm missing something. Oh no, there was the uh, Alexander York was in WCW. Stacy Keebler for a while accompanied Scott Steiner. Gee. I think that's it. It's probably one or two odd ones. I mean, besides the obvious of Miss Elizabeth, the Macho Man. Sensation. Harry. She would still wrestle from time to time. Luna Vachon wrestled. Fairly regularly. I don't know. Again, feel free to comment and say, why are you going on about stuff when you should be talking about Bobby Lashley? Um, Bobby Lashley interrupts the, the Finn's victory celebration. And I guess he has a match with Tyler Breeze. Um, oh, wait. The, the, the Finn... Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to give a rating. The, the Finn Mahal match, it was, it was a fun match. I just got thrown off by the Singh brothers. That's weird. Um, it was a good, fun match again. Finn's the more agile of the two. Gender's obviously the stronger of the two. It was good stuff. Um, really? Because this is like, again, the third time we've seen the same match. Uh, I hate doing this to Finn, but I'm going to drop you down. Again, if I start seeing you wrestle the same person after the same person after the same person, you're going to get a ham sandwich. Then, again, Bobby Lashley interrupts, like I was saying, Finn Balor's victory celebration. Um... And this sets up a Tyler Breeze match, and Tyler Breeze, I guess, got the job or entrance. Again, so somewhat fun. Why is my phone going off? I'll get that later. Some weird number, too. So then we have, again, the full Nelson. Another wrestling move I have not seen in a long time. Um, but for uh, Breeze tries, Bobby Lashley's too strong. And for the most part, this is really a glorified squash match. So therefore, a glorified squash match gets a ham sandwich. And this leads up to a Trish with Lita and Alexa and Mickey James promo. I do like the fact that Lita referenced Philadelphia because originally Lita was Miss Congeniality from ECW, which was based in Philadelphia, and they got her a little bit of a pop. It was a good promo. It sets it up. That's about all it does. Bailey meets the Riot Squad, and Sarah Logan lost her, like, Kentucky drawl, which I think for the most part was the only character thing she ever did besides paint her face weird like like a viking. I think the Kentucky backwoods warm wind suited her a little bit better. Especially when she would talk about, oh, this life, she was impossible, using a raccoon gun. And you're like, what did she ra Raccoon gun and shooting possums and Ugh. Weird stuff. Then you have Kurt Angle versus, or, yeah, Kurt Angle versus the Authors of Pain. Um, so, something was weird because it was a really poorly executed ankle lock by what was supposed to be Kurt Angle in the Conquistador outfit. 
The authors of pain have a new either finish or a signature. It's like a power bomb neck breaker. That looks cool. Um, I do like that. But again, the mass was revealed. Eh, eh. Not Kurt Angle. It's it's some jobber McJobber. And Kurt Angle gives the angle slam to Baron Corbin who's watching the stage. And, and this was it was it was okay. It was a ham sandwich match. And the only reason it was a ham sandwich is because the authors of Pain at least did something new. And then you have another backstage promo with the Riot Squad squirting like mustard and ketchup over the door of over Natalia's dressing room door. Really? Just like I don't know if you're gonna vandalize. Use like spray paint or like duct tape the whole door. Do something creative. And this led to a match between Natalia and Ruby Riot. Of course, the Riot Squad was there. So Natalia brings back a returning Sasha Banks. I guess just needed some offense. And she didn't do much. Kind of stood around ringside, delivered a backstabber, threw some around the ring. And Bailey, of course, was there. <sighs> Ruby either grew out her hair and or dyed her hair because it's a little more reddish. Or that's her or maybe that's her natural hair color. And it does look different. I'll give her some props for that. Both are both are really good in the ring. I think I've just seen the same thing from the riot squad again. Over and over and over again. That's kind of old. Um Eventually, Natalia did have Ruby Riot and the sharpshooter. Sir Logan went to break it up by going after Natalia's knee. I don't know what good that would be. Bottom position anyway. But, I mean, it was, it was good. It was fun. It was a big smudge at the end where, uh, again, because of the interference, the Riot Squad came in and started being Natalia. Then you had Sasha and Bailey jump in the ring. They, they clean house. Kind of torn on this. So again, it's really the same thing on the Riot Squad. There's no real dimension to their characters. It's going to be a ham sandwich. But I'll say it'll be that like grilled ham, grim grilled ham and cheese sandwich. So it's a little bit more taste to it. And then you have Elias promo. Elias starts to rip, again, Philadelphia sports teams. He does the same thing over and over again. I liked it when he was just ripping the crowds. And now that he's real, you're not going to mimic the heat he got against Seattle when he mentioned how the Sonics left town and they couldn't get another basketball team. Because the Flyers, I think, did win a Stanley Cup fairly recently. I'll say within the past eight years or so. Or they at least have gone to the Stanley Cup Finals a few times. I, I do know that. But Apollo Crews comes out and says, Hey, you know what? Everyone else has interrupted you. It's my turn to interrupt you. It's not a match. I'll tell you what, he has a really good gorilla press. I mean, he got Elias up there, and Elias isn't a small guy. So that's good when a, when a muscular guy can grill a press a bigger guy. That's pretty good. That should be a fun little feud for a while. Titus Worldwide. Maybe Elias joins Titus Worldwide. And... Let's see. Worldwide! Then we have the upteenth time. Dolph, Drew, and Braun versus The Shield. I think it was like the third or fourth match. They all do the same thing. I mean, only a few new things happen. I mean, Roman Reigns did manage to Samoa drop Braun Strowman. So, again, that's a tease for the crown jewel. Um, Dean and Seth are on the same page all of a sudden. 
Um, until this, the couple finishes, Dolph shoved Seth into Dean was Dean was trying to get the pin, so that broke that up. Um, Drew Claymore brawn by accident because I think Seth got out of the way. It's either Seth or Roman. By the way, um, Drew stood tall. I mean, he claymore I mean, Drew stood tall. He got the pin, too. Oh, no, the, no, the Shield got the pin on Dolph after the triple power bomb, And then it was breakup, really, between Dolph, Drew, and Braun. Braun power slammed Dolph for being weak. And then Drew claymore Braun. And then the, the Shield kind of walks out together. So Dean did tease doing a double deeds on, deeds on Seth. So this was a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. I mean, but if I have to see this again next week, it's the same thing. I mean, Time to change the cast litter box for this match because you know how it's going to end. And that was Ron and that cap. Um, I do apologize for this getting up late. Um, definitely by tomorrow morning, I will have up my SmackDown and Mixed Max Challenge reviews. I'd like to thank all those Alex, Donovan, Derek, Jack, Dean, and Bum Slim. Thank you very much. You got your shout out earlier. And again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Gmail and thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. And I look forward to making the video for you guys about the 1000 SmackDown show, which I'm kind of nervous about because I don't think there's going to be a lot of rest. There might be a lot of promos, a lot of kind of guest appearances. And then the Mixed Match Challenge. That should be fun. So everyone have a good night, day, morning, whatever.